Thumbs up and hello, UW family. This is Jana Marsh, your host, along with Carlos Guillen. Today we are huddling up with our Associate Vice President for Student Life, Lincoln Johnson. Lincoln's been with UW for over 26 years, I think, and he's had the great pleasure of leading many of our outside of the classroom student facing programs. What would that be? Those are ASUW, which is our student leadership, the registered student organizations. These are our official title for student clubs, the formation of it, the existing student clubs, the creation of it. He also works with our Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life, our Student Activities Center. He even had the pleasure of running the Husky Union Building before taking his new role right now. And we're talking to him about how we can make UW a little bit smaller, find their pack, build their pack throughout their time here at UW. So sit back and we're going to start the show. Thanks. Hi, everyone. We are huddling up with Lincoln Johnson today. And... Lincoln, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you very much for having me. My name is Lincoln Johnson. I am currently an Associate Vice President for Student Life. Uh, I've been at the University of Washington for 26 years. And University of Washington is my fourth school that I've worked with, fourth college university that I've worked with since I got out of my master's program. Uh, I moved here as the director of the Husky Union Building and Student Activities which we also refer to as the hub. And then about 13, 14 years ago, I also added on some other responsibilities. So currently my role involves basically student engagement uh, activities and events and programs and services. So I have seven departments. I work with multiple groups with seven departments. Uh, one is the Husky Union Building, which also involves student clubs and organizations, uh, registered student organizations. We refer to them as RSOs. Uh, ASUW, our undergraduate student government, GPSS, our graduate professional student government. Uh, and so that's the hub. I also work with fraternity and sorority life, student veteran life, international student engagement, student publications, which involves the daily, which has been around for over 100 years, but also WA Voice, uh, which is a Mandarin ra- uh, online radio station, Husky Video, Smirk UW, some, that do some publication work. Uh, then I also work with, uh, I have convocation and ceremony, so uh, commencement is one of our responsibilities as well. So I am very, very fortunate. I say I have one of the best jobs at the University of Washington. There are people who will try to push back on that, but the reason why I do it, I, I have the best job, is that I work with some of the best and most creative, brilliant, uh, and talented students uh, in, that I've ever worked with. So, but to sort of give you a really quick story, I got I was went to school at Baylor University in Waco, Texas. Born and raised in Waco, I was a kid who was raised on campus. My parents worked at that institution for over seventy years combined, so it was pretty much the only university that I was familiar with. Thankfully, I got in. I was a music major. I was a music education and voice major. Uh, and I was very involved as an undergraduate, but mostly through the School of Music. Uh, never ever thought about this as a career. I was going to be a conductor. Never wanted to be a performer. Uh, I'm really awful on stage, but I'm a, I, I had a good voice and I, could, I was a, a good conductor. And then uh, I taught junior high right out of my undergraduate degree, taught junior high in Amarillo, Texas, and it wasn't a good fit. I was too young, too arrogant, too cocky, and I and so I ran away from teaching junior high and went back to graduate school at Baylor in higher education because a dean, a vice president, encouraged me to come back because he knew me as an undergrad. And from there, I found my joy. I found the reason of what I was supposed to do. I loved teaching students. I loved working with students, junior high and high school students. But I, all the other stuff I didn't care for. And I found this beautiful mix of being able to be involved in leadership and run businesses, and encourage students to get connected. So I found this beautiful connection with the work. So I feel very, very fortunate to have ended up at University of Washington. 
I thought I would be here seven years and 26 years later, I'm still here and it's the best gig. It, it's the best job. I am so fortunate. Well, you know, Lincoln, uh, I, I hope everyone uh, who's listening understands just how, you know, how lucky they are to, to be listening to you because you literally have the secret to success here at the University of Washington, which I always say t that the secret to success at UW is finding that smaller community. And that's really what your focus is, is how do you how do you incorporate different strategies and different opportunities for students to, to find their people? And I think that's awesome. I'm also really thinking that your conducting skills has really helped with convening various different aspects of this experience it's such you know i just because i just wanted lincoln to take a little bit of a break after he's told everybody <laughs> all these really great groups it's getting all of these folks to kind of work in sync and together um so happy to kind of have you re restate all of those really wonderful groups again <laughs> Yeah, are you want me to restate the groups I'm involved with? Oh, no, yeah. just like, oh. how do they interact with each other? They uh, seem know, so it, desperate, right? I love the metaphor. I, and I feel kind of ridiculous that I had not thought about the metaphor of conducting with sort of the work I do. Um, but the reality is, is that, you know, the, in many ways, the departments that I interact with, but also departments I interact with outside of my groups. I mean, I, my team and I interact with residents life, we work with you know conduct and community standards. We work with first year programs. We work with parent and family programs. We work with academic schools and colleges. But a lot, it's in some ways there is a little bit of there's a lot of independence that comes from working with our teams, whether it's in the hub or student veteran life or the fraternity and fraternal community. But at times there are, they, we do work in synchronicity, but sometimes we don't because the communities are so varied and so different. So those students that are connecting through student veteran life may not be engaging with fraternity and sorority life, but at the same time, our outcome is all the same. It is trying to find, help students find connection and take full advantage of their Husky experience. I say, I want them to find their experience and be happy and content and while they're here and then go off and be happier and more content when they leave here. And so we we'll all have little nuggets of that. We have roles to play. Sometimes it is, I'm sorry, now I'm doing my hands. Sometimes it is, sometimes it is, it is, you know, conducting, trying to help them find those connections and those networks and partnerships and collaborations. But sometimes it's just also internal and solitary to their work. But at the same time, the, the mission is the same, is helping students take, make the most of their experience here. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that we hear a lot from first year students, from their parents and family members, is that UW is such a huge institution. There are so many different opportunities to take advantage of that sometimes students are almost stunted by the sheer number. What what sort of advice do you have in terms of navigating just the the, the size of the institution? Well, it, it is true. I mean, we are we are a very large institution, and I've used this number that we can have a community of 65, 70,000 people a day on the Seattle campus. So that can be overwhelming. Um, I came I come from a town of 100,000. University of Washington. I would have been a little uh, scared, you know, how to, and I'm fairly outgoing when I need to be. So I think it, it, it can be intimidating. Uh, it can, it can be, it can be overwhelming, but I think that there are ways that students and parents can encourage their students to, to make it more uh, accessible and welcoming and intimate. And, and it can be different. I also have to preface to say this, this will be different for first year students than it would be for second and third year students. And certainly for the those students that are seniors. But there, I think there are a couple of things is, first of all, I think that students, I want them to be themselves. They're, they're, they do not need to put on airs and try to be who they think other people want them to be. Um, I think that one of the things, because especially in your first year, you know, you're coming, you know, whether they're inter you know, getting to know each other through their FIG, if they're connected to a FIG, I mean, get to know those individuals. I always say, ask who what what somebody's name is and where do they go to high school just to start building a connection just so you can go oh my goodness i met so and so today in my 
uh, sociology class. It was so cool. They are from Boise, Idaho. I think though there are ways. I mean, I think those are things that we sometimes forget that, that we can give advice administratively in terms of leadership, but students have to walk and take the action, take the initiative. So a couple of things. It is introduce themselves to people they're sitting next to in class, take full advantage of, we have over a thousand student organizations. And that's just, that's just a small portion of all the other things that are to do on campus. So go and just explore and go to the free events that are on campus. Go to the activities, go so many events. Go to the activities fair and look and see what clubs and organizations are available. And if you don't like what you see, start your own. Uh, there, there, clubs and organizations, it's not hard, hard to form. It takes five students to form a club. So I take it, do that. Uh, the other way is I think that we sometimes forget to talk about that if, if a student has time and availability, student employment is a great way to build a connection on campus. There are thousands of student jobs on campus, whether it's in the libraries, in a lab, in food services, in the student union, through all the work that we do collectively. There are lots and lots of opportunities. Um, I think, you know, go to class, study, go to work groups, go to study groups. When a faculty member says, I truly mean it, please come to my office hours. And the reason, and this doesn't really talk about sort of connection with students, but it does talk about connection to the campus. I don't know a faculty member that I've interacted with in my time here that does not care deeply and want to know students. They, it's hard to do when they're speaking to a class to know everybody, but going and knocking on that door and say, Professor so-and-so, my name is Lincoln, and I've just got a question about where did you go to school and how did you even decide to study biology? Sometimes those relationships grow to be uh, uh, beyond just a faculty, a student relationship, but become part of your network and part of your mentoring relationship and actually can grow into friendship. Uh, and I'm very, th and I know, I know that staff feel the same. So I think that's one of the, you know, I always just say, ask questions and introduce yourself. It's so easy to make this place smaller. And then as, it, as you get, you know, go farther into, you know, your uh, students uh, beyond their first year, it does begin to change. It, we are a big place. Even faculty and staff that come here go, oh my, we're so, you know, we're big. But give it six months, give it three months, and eventually, it gets to be, you, you, you know your surroundings better. You know where your buildings are. You know where to get coffee. You know where your, your, the group you want to study with in Suzalo or in Odegaard are. But I think as you become, a, get more acquainted and comfortable with your experience, then in many ways, you, know, you start engaging more deeply instead of sort of try, dabbling in multiple, you know, dozens of things. You narrow that pool, whether it's, you know, you're studying um, you know, biology or working in a lab or you have a campus job or you're getting involved in leadership. And then it starts to turn and you become that guide and that voice for the next generation that's walking through. So whether it's a freshman or a sophomore, and we sometimes forget that, but it can seem daunting at first. I see it in the eyes of students walking around the first three weeks. They're wide-eyed, they may have their phone and their map, trying to find the best route to their classroom. But sometimes it's just a, I wonder what's going, I see a group of people gathered over there or they're tabling over there or tabling on the lawn at the Hub Lawn or Red Square. Sometimes it's just, hey, what, what's going on? And that, that can be, a, that can be a, a scary step to take. Um, so I, I just really encourage students to take full advantage and ask us, ask us in terms of campus administration, leadership, faculty and staff, if you've got a question, we will help. And if we don't know the answer, we know who to go to to get the answer. Oh, that's right. Well, we all know how to get to Lincoln. So that's why Carlos and I are asking him all of these really great questions. I also just really wanted to reiterate, there's so many clubs. I love the aspect of you don't see yourself in these clubs. Gather up four like-minded, wonderful individuals and start your own. Um, the student employment, 
Uh, what you all are not hearing her right now, Chloe Giselle is a student employee of ours. She is helping us sound great, be great on this <laughs> Husky Huddle Love podcast. We're kind of powered by a lot of our student workers. And um, I I do think that there's a there's an aspect and a transformative aspect of asking faculty why they are doing what they're doing. It it does. It's a it's a symbiotic, really wonderful relationship. But I wanted to ask for those students or families whose students are a little bit shyer, needs a little bit more encouragement, might not be the really great student on Red Square and asking all the table folks, like, what's this? What's this? What would you suggest um, that they do just to kind of get their feet wet? <laughs> I, I think that, I, you know, certainly for first year students, I would I would recommend to anybody to, to get, you know, just go and see what's happening at Welcome Week. Dog days, um, as we refer. Yeah, I think that, that just to get your feet wet, as you just said, to get your feet wet to see like, oh, you know, this we are we are we are an institution of learning, but we also are a place of fun and recreation and excitement and friendship and and I think that you know getting your feet wet at, at dog days is really important. The other piece I just want to acknowledge is that not every student is going to take it to have the same kind of experience. So you know maybe maybe it is the the individuals that they know are who they happen to be living with in the res hall or in an apartment or in a chapter house for a fraternity or sorority, maybe and that's that is okay. I think the important piece is finding a connection and finding a community or communities, and whether that is two or three people, maybe it's maybe it's affiliated through you have an interest in Pokemon. You know, maybe you find somebody and maybe that's a small group of people that you that you really connect with and jive with. That is as worthwhile and affirming as in being involved in student government. And I don't want to I don't think that any of my team or any of us on this call would certainly say that it needs to it needs to be an equation that equals, oh, I have to have this, this, this and it equals this. The other piece that um, I think that. Sometimes our students are so academically focused and that is brilliant. That's why they're here and we supplement that. But that's where the faculty and the, and the, TA, the teaching assistants come into play. Whether in sometimes the connection can come, be out of an undergraduate class that, that interacts with a graduate student or a doctoral student who's teaching, I keep going to biology, that's the only thing that's coming to mind, or psychology or psych, you know, sociology. And sometimes just to say, I have a question about what you said on page so-and-so. It's amazing what that relationship and that interaction can, can, that can do for a student. So I think that is another way of taking baby steps so you don't have to, you know, the activity sphere is overwhelming. There's 200 and 300 organizations out there and it's a big family reunion. So I would be, you know, it's, I can find it a little, uh, overwhelming to walk into that tent. But uh, there are other ways of whether it is you're in line for at Starbucks, you're in line and go, hey, you know, hi, uh, how's your first week going? Sometimes relationships can blossom in beautiful ways that we don't even fathom that I don't even fathom. So I do think it, it, it's okay for, I think it's okay for parents, I understand for the worry, but it's okay if a student does it immediately take advantage of everything. We want them to find some connection and some ounce of community, whether that's two people or 50. Mm -hmm. I think one like really, um, really important thing that you mentioned that I wanted to highlight is that it can happen anywhere, right? It doesn't have to be that that formula of I'm going to go and join a student organization, which, you know, thousands of students do it that way. But, you know, it could come from a job. It can come from, you know, the Starbucks line. It can come from just sitting next to someone in class. I feel like that is um, I think that that's important, right, that that um, it, it, it's, it's, it doesn't have to be that the way that you see it in the movies. Um, but I feel like also there are there's places on campus where community happens 
things. And, you know, given your background with the Husky Union building, I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about, you know, how does place come into in, into it and what places on campus do you suggest students go to to find community? Yeah. I, that's a great question, Carlos. I, I and and I have been here long enough to, you know, have worked with or advised or interacted with many of them. Of course, I always go to the hub. It is the community center for students. It is the living room uh, for the campus. And it's also, you know, in many ways, a leadership center like other many places on campus. But there are, there are in the hub, there are multiple places. There, there are food opportunities. There's the uh, commuter and transfer commons. There's the student activities office. There are ASUW, our undergraduate student government. There are also the units that I work with, Fraternity and Story Life and Student Vet Life, and the Q Center, which is our queer center for LGBT and trans students. So there are multiple places to step into finding a community. But on campus and beyond the hub, the IMA, which is our, uh, our university gym, you know, yoga classes and uh, climbing walls and spinning classes and mountaineering and renting canoes, the indoor pool. Well, when it when it becomes open again, it's you know it well, summer of twenty three is my hope and our our goal for summer of twenty three. But there are you know that's a wonderful place you can go as an individual and be on machine and share and maybe you're lifting weights or you're trying to wait to get onto a treadmill and you're waiting on somebody. There's still a way of interacting with people. You know this this is I at times I think about children when they're in kindergarten. And they're just so like, oh my God, who are you? Oh my God, my name is so and so. I think in many ways that we forget those skills, and so you know, there are you know, the IMA is a way of saying, oh, are you using this bench or this machine? Can I use it when you're finished? And sometimes think, you know, place is so in, so important. The libraries, I can't tell you how many libraries we have on campus. It's got to be over twenty five. I, I know two particular ones because that's where I, you know, Odegaard and Suslo are the most prominent ones. That is another one. Uh, there are places off campus, right off the, you know, off campus in terms of the Ave. But then there are the living communities, you know, from the residence halls. There are apartments within proximity to campus. But the fraternities and sororities, they probably have twenty five hundred to three thousand students that are housed there. So there are lots of connection places. In addition, there are faith communities that are connected to campus, you know, on the edge of campus as well. So you can. There are other ways of finding a community that doesn't need to just be on you proper. Have you seen any good shows lately? Um, I am bringing you back to your conducting, like uh, <laughs> origin story. I guess this is my, that's what I do with this podcast is to remind Lincoln that he used to be a conductor. Um, where do you find these wonderful like shows and symphonies? I know you know them. I know you know them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, well, and I will say that, you know, this is, um, I sort of used the phrase maybe earlier that being in a big, being in a, you know, a large campus has its uh, joys and its curses. I think being in Seattle is the same thing. There's just so much opportunity, but the arts are so prominent in King County in the Seattle area. And on campus there as well, and they are they are lost to many people because it's, there are so many things to choose from. There are there are at least two art galleries on campus: uh, the Henry Art Gallery, which is is a phenomenal contemporary modern art gallery. There are things that that you, that you will not see anyplace else. There is the Jake Jake Jacob Lawrence Gallery. We we refer to it as the Jake, which is going to be renovated in the next I think next year. It does a lot of student produced work uh, on campus. You know, then, you know, the drama department does theater all year. Now, for the past two and a half years, everything's been remote. It's been done in terms of a hybrid setting, but they'll be back. We'll be back on campus. The School of Music has recitals all the time. Concerts, choir, orchestra, wind ensemble, quintets, pianos, uh, concertos, all of that's happening. But at the same time, in the city, there are multiple opportunities, whether it is drama, whether it's theater, music, dance. I, I forgot about the University of Washington Dance Department, which I support. I go to almost all of their stuff. There's just all these beautiful opportunities. And the one 
that uh, that gets lost is that we do have a, a world renowned arts program uh, arts series on campus through the Meany uh, Performing Arts Center called the Meany Arts Series. I may be making that name up, but for for students, they have these special ticket prices, limited tickets for ten dollars for every one of them, and they do uh, everything from international world dance to piano concert, uh, pianists to quintets and viol uh, quintets and quartets to theater. It's it's a beautiful program, um, and I think that and this is not this is not just for parents and families and students. Faculty and staff kind of forget about this as well. And I am, as Jana has alluded, I am a supporter of the arts. I have been, I have sung for my entire life, continue to do so, but even I forget and overlook these opportunities on campus and off. So I thank you for bringing me back to that because I could, I, I could probably gush about the arts on campus a little bit too much. What I love is that, you know, most pretty much everything that you mentioned are students are involved in whether it's the creation of it or the performance of it. Um, what sort of events like I know that students produce events as well as through student organizations. And I know that, you know, event event planning has slowed a little bit over the pandemic. But what are some memorable events, student produced events that that, you know, that you're looking forward to over this next year that maybe some students can also look forward to as they're getting started? Well, I, I, I feel like y'all y'all have led me to this. I, I, I'll be honest. For the parents of families listening to this, the name of the organization has escaped me because it's, we, they haven't been operational for three years. But for the for the drama department, for the theater, there is a student-run theater program. They per, they perform in Hutchinson Hall in a black box theater. They do everything from production, direction, audition, acting, and producing by students, and it is. They do some, you know, they do everything from Shakespeare, but they also do some very sort of more modern, contemporary, quirky things. And it's always a blast to go because you see people who are truly, you know, are dabbling, maybe like they're interested in performing or maybe working behind the scenes. And then you also see people that are, you know, that are going to be acting the rest of their lives. And it's just, it's a, gosh, this is awful. I just hate it that I can't remember the name. Um, is it the stage notes? No, Stage Notes is another one. Stage Notes does, thank you for bringing oh, that that's up. The one. Yes. Stage Notes does, <laughs> uh, does, typically does musical theater, and oh. they usually perform out of ethnic cultural theater, uh, and they've done a number of productions. <laughs> this, is this, this, is a, this is, I'm actually getting really excited about fall, about the new school year. It because is, right? we, we have, we, you know, campus has been different for three years. And a lot of the students have been doing events They've all been remote, but they've not been sort of, I've not gone to them. So I, I thank you. Stage notes is a great one as well. Uh, the, the one, this is, this is kind of student produced, but also administratively supported. The, this goes back to dog days. I have always loved Fall Fling, the concert that's done at the start of the new year. It's not because I love all the music that's done. I love I just love sort of seeing the excitement of students coming together from all over campus and for one one thing and it can get it can be rainy, it can be beautiful, it can be muddy, but you just sort of see this joy and also like oh, a new year is starting and it makes and I love all I love all dog days. I love all advising and orientation. It just it just it gives me goosebumps, but I love fall fling. The other one I was going to say that this is uh, a cultural event that has it's been done on campus for, well, longer than I've been here. So I'm going to say 35 or 40 years. I love the luau. That's typically typic typically done in the spring quarter. It is one of the more most beautifully produced student events. Uh, it is also just a lovely tradition of dance and the food, and it's also a humongous family reunion. Families fly in from, from Hawaii for this. They fly from all over the United States, but primarily they come in from Hawaii. And it's just as beautiful in terms of just what students are wearing and the dances that the men and women are doing. It's just stunning. And I always love it. I miss it because we haven't had it for three or four years. It's a, it's a favorite as well. Now, this is the next one is not, this is going to be a little bit of a guiding answer, but I love the stuff that's done through the Husky Leadership Initiative. 
Um, I think that if, you know, if students are beginning to dabble or are interested in what it means to be a leader, I think taking advantage of H we call it HLI, it's just a way of start stepping into leadership as, as an, as a concept, as a construct. And it's also, um, I think it's very exciting. It's a newer program at the institution and, um, I'm also a big supporter of it. So, so what I, it seems like you're. I, I hope that everybody can, can sense the, the energy of us wanting to not necessarily go back to normal, but how these events and these engagement like really kind of power through this Husky experience and kind of give a little bit of jolt uh, to things. As Lincoln was mentioning all of these wonderful things, I mean, I don't know about you, Carlos, so like I started thinking about when I did go to that show, when we went to Nini or... Or it's just, um, and the fact that we're kind of trying to make it so that it's safe again to to do so. And I, um, and this mention of dog days, I think, is just a really great way to kind of have that incorporation of all of those things um, going on for uh, as we begin the year. Um, but I, I wanted to ask, like, just to give it a little bit of context how you've seen that shift and change and how we did approach, um, how we engage students. You know, we have second year families, junior families, uh, senior families that might be listening, how we kind of learned from the engagement problem like, that we've experimented on over the pandemic and how do you see that going and moving forward? Like, Well, I, I will say that, uh, and and the people on this, that are coordinating this, this, this podcast know that I'm not overly technical. That's putting it mildly. Um, I was actually very, very worried when February of 2020 or March of 2020 happened. And I thought, oh, everything we do is just gone for however long. I thought it was going to be six to eight weeks. I didn't realize it was going to be two years. But the reality is our team, our faculty and staff really found ways of modifying and rebuilding and reformatting what it meant to be active on campus. Now that meant it was all done over the computer. It was done through Zoom, it was done through Teams, it was done through other platforms for events. The first six months, not a lot happened. Uh, student, student organizations slowed down. I think there are a variety of reasons for that. But I think the next, when we got into 21, people, I think students started saying, well, we still want to do this, whether it's a cultural event, whether it's a political event, whether it's a faith event, whether it is uh, creating their own videos, they're doing uh, miniature concerts. So students found ways of, and I think that well, that's what's going to continue. I think that there will be some things that are going to be done that are video and on on the computer more than probably we've ever seen before. And I think that will be almost all will be initiated by students, students and student leaders and student programmers and student coordinators for a variety of things. That is pretty exciting because that's that, you know, that when students are on social, they're seeing that anyway. Somebody's playing a guitar and singing a song that they just wrote and want to share that. I think that kind of those kind of activities will continue. I think at the same time, I'm, I think we will see a return to more things on campus. But I think that staff, uh, certainly staff that are advising these events, will be doing a lot more of that remotely instead of necessarily in person. Uh, I think that that's just, I think that's something that we have to embrace as an institution. I think that some of that, that's already happening. I think some people think it's going to completely go back to what it was in fall of 2019. I, I do not think that. But I also think that it, we can still encourage a campus life, a campus experience, a campus involvement, engagement that is personable, but may look different than what I knew as an undergraduate or what we knew as, I knew as campus programming even three years ago. So I think that some of the technology and some of the things that students certainly know that I don't know will, I think, will enhance, and we just have to start embracing it. And I may be slow to it, but I'm I'm trying to learn fast as quickly as possible. You know, Lincoln, you you mentioned that it was a, a vice president who back in the day, you know, um, inspired you to get back to school and work in higher education. Now that you're a VP, um, what what impact has your mentees, your, all the students that you've worked oh. with, what impact oh. have, have they made on you? Okay, this, so I'll try not to cry, 
Okay. <laughs> um, I, I, I love what I do. My work is really important to me. But the reason why I do it is the students that I work with. And it is a gift if a relationship has come out of that. Um, and I have, I've, I, you, the, the parents and families listening to this cannot see the background on this call. But my, my student community, and I call, I don't matter, it doesn't matter if they graduated 25 years ago, they're still students of mine. Uh, those, that is actually the gift and the blessing of the work, and we've all had it. I don't know of a faculty or staff member who doesn't, has not had that opportunity, but being a part of, you know, they're, they're buying their first house or just adopted their first pet or are, are in a serious relationship or having children or they're going on vacation and they want to share pictures. That is, that is, that is just icing on the cake. The work of trying to working with students and student leaders is the, the vehicle to that. So um, I, I feel very, very fortunate. Um, I will also say that I learn from my students, students from last year and students from 26 years ago. I was just with uh, some alumni on Thursday night. One had graduated 15 years ago, the other graduated eight years ago. And we're laughing and we're telling stories and they're reminding me of things that, of course, my memory is, is, is not as long as theirs. And, and we were talking about the work they're doing and it's just, it, it blows my mind. The, the things that our students are doing when they leave here and that we as faculty staff have some kind of role in that. It doesn't matter if it's a large or small or minuscule. Oh my goodness. There's nothing better than that. Nothing better. That's awesome. And to give everyone kind of the visual of uh, Lincoln is, uh, I think you're in your office in front of a very large bulletin board that is literally covered with pictures of what I'm assuming are former students, yeah. postcards, yep. cards. It, it, yep. it truly Holiday is cards. a physical representation yeah. of the impact that you've made here at yeah. UW. And they've had on me. Yeah. Aww. This conversation is always, it's always really hard to end these conversations because you wanted to keep going. So um, I feel like this is a really great way for us to say uh, thank you so much, Lincoln, for taking the time, for your energy, for the work that you do and work and huddling up with us uh, today. And hopefully our families have a little bit more uh, uh understanding some information some wonderful things to share with their student about how to how to build their pack how to find their tribe how to get their paws wet i should have said paws instead of feet i'm sorry everybody i'm trying to do it now uh meeting faculty and also who doesn't want to work uh on campus great campus jobs thanks so much lincoln what a great way to 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 talk about how to make friends <laughs> at UW. Well, thank you for thank you for inviting me. It's been a lot of fun. The Husky Huddle Up podcast is a collaboration between the University of Washington first year programs and parent and family programs to provide parents and families equitable access to information in support of their student success. The Husky Huddle Up is produced by me, Chloe Giselle, a senior in the UW Cinema and Media Studies program.